Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This week I'm going to be talking to you about row access policies. Snowflake released this feature earlier this year. It's, I think it's a really excellent addition to the Snowflake product. It makes managing fine grain permissions to individual records within your tables much easier, much simpler, and it's, it's really powerful at the same time. I think you're going to find this video really useful. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to cover a couple of demos of how best to implement this and just how easy it is to use in the real world. And if you don't forget, guys, if you're getting good value from this channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new videos coming weekly. Okay, so row access policies. Let's uh, let's see what they're all about. And uh, I think they're a really good feature. They they're really valuable and they really simplify row level access security in the management and overhead of that. So um, yeah, they is, they simply allow you to define access to individual rows based on that role of the user and the values within those records, which we'll see in a second when I go through a, a demo in Snowflake. By allowing you to create a row access policy, it centralizes the rules around it and it makes it much easier and eliminates a lot of that kind of need to um, have different data silos for different groups of users. You can literally have all of your data in one table, define a row access policy, attach it to the table, and then that will limit the number of records that those roles can see. So there's three steps. Uh, which are quite straightforward once you know what you're doing to use raw access policies. So the first thing is you define the policy itself and you can optionally define a mapping table, which I will show you as well as part of the demo. You can then apply that policy to one or more tables and attach it to the, the particular column and value that you want to restrict access to. And then finally, you can just query the data using different roles and test it yourself. So it's pretty straightforward. Before we get into the demo, let's just talk about the scenario that we're going to work through today. So imagine that you have one sales table containing sales for all different territories uh, within it. You're working on a requirement which requires you to restrict data access so that only those sales managers responsible for a particular territory can only see data for their, their respective one. In this instance, we're going to have uh, two particular roles, one role called sales EMEA, and that can only see EMEA data, and a sales APAC role, which can only see APAC data. So this is the ideal use case, and a really quite a common one, and it's a perfect example of when we use raw access policies. And let's get into the demo so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we've headed over to Snowflake into the web UI. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a database called row access. In there, I'm going to create a table called sales. And this is uh, the table that's going to hold all of our sales data for multiple territories. So I've created the sales table. It's currently empty. So I'm going to just load some sample data into the table. So I'm just going to use the web UI for this. So if I go into databases, to my sales table, and load some data, I select my warehouse. I'm going to select my sales data sample file. I need to specify a file format um, because I haven't created one for this database. So I'm just going to call it file format underscore CSV. And I'm going to tell it to skip the first line because it contains a header. I'm going to use that file format. I'm going to take the default load options and I'm going to load that data in here. And you'll see in a second that it will load with 2,823 uh, records in there. So let's just have a quick look at the data in that table. You can see here I've got a whole bunch of data in there. There's my 2,823 rows. Um, we're not really too concerned about any of the columns in here other than this territory one where you can see I've got some NAs, some EMEAs and as well there'll be some APAC ones further down in there which we'll see later. So now I'm going to create this uh, access policy and this is how you actually create it. It creates an object in the database. So the syntax here is create or replace row access policy. You give it a name. Um, we're going to pass in a string value uh, associated with territory. This could be called anything um, here for your column name. 
Um, we're just keeping it very uh, simple and intuitive by calling it the same name as our column. It's going to return a Boolean value, so a true or false, depending on the outcome of this case statement. So in here, I've got when the sales manager role is equal to the current role, which is executing um, the query, then return true. If the role is sales underscore EMEA and the territory is equal to this EMEA value, then return true. Similarly for the APAC one as well. Otherwise, return false. And so what this will do is that this will just create an object initially in the database and it won't be attached to the table. It won't be effective. It won't actually do anything um, until we, we apply it to a table. But take note that this will be evaluated for every record at runtime and it will decide um, based upon the territory value that which is in the table and the current role which is executing the query whether it should return true or false for each individual row. And that's how it makes a decision of what record to return back to the user. So we're going to create that row access policy. Now, importantly, we're going to attach it to the table. So we use an alter table command. We specify our sales table and we add the row access policy that we've just created, the sales territory one, on to the column on the table that we're interested in. In this case, it's the territory column. We'll run that. And now we're going to create a bunch of roles so we can test this out. I'm going to use the security admin and um, create a bunch of roles, uh, one for the sales manager, one for the sales EMEA, and one for the APAC. I'm going to give it the permissions that it needs on the warehouse databases schemas. Now I've set up those roles and created all the privileges. To make it easy to test uh, for the demo, I'm going to attach those um, roles I've created to my own user that I'm running under at the moment. And then that allows me to switch between the context easily without having to log out and log in. Okay, so now I'm going to use the sales manager role. And if you remember, the access policy specifies that can view all territories. I'm going to just um, select the territory and just run account star from the sales table, group them by territory using that particular role. You can see here I get all the records back for all of the different territories in here. Note EMEA has 1,407 records and APAC has 221. That will become important when we run this next query just to check um, what we're expecting to see. So we're using the EMEA role now. Exactly same query again. This case we only get back EMEA. And if we were to query the whole table just using a select star, again we'd see the same records related to this 1407. We run the same query again, but this time under a different role, and we run on the APAC role, and we see the APAC. So really, really easy to implement and attach to a table, and then it's uh, it's ready immediately, and it helps centralize all of your logic in one place and promotes reusability. So it's a really good thing to do. Now I'm going to show you how to do a mapping table really quickly just for the two roles EMEA and APAC just to keep it simple. I'm going to just drop the row policy first of all before I recreate it otherwise it will give you an error if it's currently attached to a table it will not let you drop and recreate it for good and obvious reasons. So alter the table sales, drop the row access policy, that's done. I'm going to create a very basic map and table I'm going to call it sales territory it's going to have two columns a row a role column, sorry, and a territory code. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to have our role name and the value that's associated with our row access policy. Nice and simple. There's the table there with the values in it. Now, when I create the row access policy, I'm going to give it the same name. It works in a similar way, but this time I'm checking my uh, lookup table here by passing in the territory value from the row access policy using that to restrict the subquery on the mapping table just to return those records as well as the current role function. So I've created the row access policy. I now need to attach it to the table in the same way that we did before. So I've altered the sales table and attached it. Okay, so now I've applied that row access policy, including the mapping table logic back to the sales table. I can go back to my original queries and just check them out again. So in this case, let's just run the EMEA query. 
Again, I get the 1407 records. If I run the APAC query, I get 221. And there you have it. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe. Keep watching. New videos coming soon.